Hi, this is attorney David Henn. I want to talk to you about what you should do if you're out riding and you come upon a downed motorcyclist. Now, I'm a lawyer, I'm not a medical professional, but I've been representing bikers for over 25 years, and in that time, you learn a thing or two about what you should and should not do at an accident scene. And what you should do actually starts well before the accident itself, and that is you should always be aware of where you're at and what road you're riding on. This is especially important when you're traveling on country roads or out in rural areas where the roads aren't always marked real well and there's not a lot of cross streets or mile markers to help you identify your exact location. After all, you're going to be calling a 911 operator and have to tell them where the accident is at and you have to know where you're at in order to do that accurately. One trick you can do is as you are passing through a uh, town, uh, reset your trip odometer. That way you can tell the 911 operator what road you're on and how many miles north, south, east, west you are of the last town that you went through. That'll help them send uh, emergency personnel uh, in the right direction and they'll know uh, the general area about where you are at on the road. Don't assume that the 911 operator is going to be able to triangulate your position using cellular towers. That works real well in the movies, but it's nothing you can rely upon in the case of an emergency. Now, while you're dialing 911, it's important that you assess the situation where the accident is at and determine if the uh, downed biker and passenger and you are going to be safe while you're at the accident scene. Are you on a blind curve or are you at the uh, uh, backside of the crest of a hill that has a blind side on either direction uh, so that oncoming motorists might not see you as you are there with the downed biker and passenger. If so, take a few seconds and move your own motorcycle a distance up or down the road, uh, turn your flashers on and create a roadblock so there's a buffer zone so that you are safe uh, while you are assisting the downed biker and passenger. Also assess the situation for dangers that may be present for you and the biker and passenger. Uh, is the gas tank leaking uh, on a hot surface like the engine that it could ignite? Uh, are there down power lines or are there any other uh, uh, risks of danger or hazards that are present in the scene? This is going to tell you what you need to do as you are uh, approaching and determining what you can do and cannot do to assist uh, the biker and passenger. If there is a fire or if there is some other immediate uh, extreme situation of danger or peril uh, to the injured biker and passenger, only then should you attempt to move them. If there is no impending danger of further injury or possible death from fire or otherwise, leave them where they're at. You can um, further injure them or uh, cause new injuries if you attempt to move an injured biker or a passenger. Also, as you're approaching uh, the accident scene, take a look around and see if there could be any additional injured persons on the periphery of the accident scene. People get thrown great distances and motorcycle collisions. And while you are approaching one downed biker, there could be uh, another person, a passenger, who has been thrown some great distance into the adjacent uh, uh, ditch or grass uh, in the weeds that you don't even see them. Take a look at the bike. Are the passenger pegs down? Uh, that could be an indication that there was a passenger. If the biker or the passenger, whoever's lying in front of you, is conscious, ask them if they were alone or if there's somebody else. That'll let you know um, what you have in front of you, and you can further inform uh, the 911 operator on the phone about who the injured people are and what the situation is. Now, never ever attempt to remove a downed biker or passenger's helmet. Um, that helmet is going to be a fantastic uh, immobilization device that will help hold uh, the head and neck somewhat stable. Um, removing a helmet uh, could greatly exacerbate injuries and could cause some considerable uh, injuries. So never ever attempt to remove uh, the helmet unless for some strange reason the, the helmet is creating a condition of danger that could uh, cause injury, but that's, that's uh, highly unlikely is going to be the case. Now, as you are further assessing their condition and you are awaiting for uh, medical uh, personnel to arrive, uh, look for any um, indication of serious bleeding. Hopefully you have a first aid kit in your motorcycle that you can use uh, to render some immediate first aid uh, to the downed biker and passenger. If you find that there is a significant bleed, it's important that you do what you can to stop that bleeding. Hopefully you have uh, trauma pads or uh, bandages in your first aid kit that you can apply to the wound uh, and apply a considerable amount of pressure uh, sufficient to stop the bleeding. Blood is life, and if a biker bleeds out while uh, uh, medical personnel are en route, um, that is a situation that could quickly uh, end in death uh, or uh, 
uh, greater debilitating injury uh, to the biker or passenger. Um, you can remove your belt and use it as a tourniquet if that's necessary, uh, but do what you can to stop bleeding. Uh, beyond that, uh, the 911 operator will hopefully be able to walk you through any additional first aid uh, that you are able to render at the scene. Uh, but what's important is that you do what you can to stabilize the situation and stabilize their condition until medical professionals arrive to take over the care uh, of the biker and the passenger. As always, stay safe out there, enjoy the ride, and we'll talk again later.